Yeah, so I am currently a wildlife biologist stationed up in the Upper Peninsula working with the Department of Natural Resources, the uh, DNR, as it's commonly referred to in Michigan. Um, My primary role with them right now is tracking, tagging, and monitoring the larger predator population in the UP. So primarily wolves, bears, and cougars. Um, So I spend the majority of my time either in the woods actually tracking, tranking, and then collaring or tagging these animals. And then I send all of my data back to um, one of our field offices in the UP, and they do they do what they need to do with that data, and I I move on. So that's that's my primary role um, currently right now. So I don't I don't have a desk or an office. My office is um, is the woods. So I currently own three hundred and eighty acres in the heart of the Hiawatha National Forest in the UP. Um, that land was given to me by my grandfather when he passed away. Uh, he inherited that land from his dad. Um, it's been in their family um, for generations. He's been taking me up there since I was like six years old. So I'm extremely familiar with this property. Um, when I'm working in the UP, that's that's where I stay. I'm, I'm up there about nine months out of the year. So I know this property, you know, like the back of my hand. Like I said, I've been going up there since I was about six years old and I've, I've made it my primary residence currently. I do have a residence down in the lower peninsula as well, but um, I switched moved everything up there when I I took the position in the UP. This incident occurred back uh, opening day of bow season uh, in 2019. As I like to get out um, in the woods and I have three or four spots that I have set up where I'm always successful. I always take game, always take deer. This particular day I got up, it's opening day, wasn't expecting to take one. I typically don't opening day. I'll let a few pass just because it's opening day and I don't Don't want to, you know, fill my tag that quick. So I get out there about 5 a.m. And I like I like getting out there when it's dark, putting on my headlamp, walking in and then watching kind of the woods wake up. Um, Birds coming out, squirrels, rabbits. I just I really enjoy that. That's just kind of my happy place. And Wes, you said you were a hunter. And so I think you can kind of picture this into any of the other hunters out there. There's about a 30 to 40 minute window right before the sun comes up where everything is just kind of gray. Everything is muted. You see a tree, but you don't necessarily see that it's green and it's, it's fall. So everything is already kind of dead and dying anyways. And so the light hasn't hit it yet. And it's just, it's kind of gray. So I'm, I'm positioned um, about 35 yards back from a ridge line, and off to my left, a game trail runs up the ridge and then about, 25 yards in front of me it crosses right where i have where i'm set up i'm kind of i'm watching this ridge line it's kind of gray the sun hasn't quite peaked yet it's not legal shooting hours and off to my left i noticed this kind of a, a black mass just kind of peeking over the ridge line and my initial thought was holy cow that is a huge bobcat We have bobcats in Michigan. They're all over the place. But this one was 35 yards back, and the most distinguishing feature that I could see were the ears. Anybody seen a bobcat before? They have very pointed ears, kind of smaller, but very pointed ears. Wolves don't have that. Bears don't have that. Cougars don't have that. These were characteristically bobcat ears. So I'm 35, you know, 35, 40 yards back, and the fact that I can pick out these ears that's a you know to me that's a big bobcat i'm kind of watching it and it kind of disappears you know in some pine trees and it just kind of the underbrush and i kind of thought to myself geez i hope that comes a little closer so i can get a good look at this bobcat figured it it figured it was gone so about 10 minutes later again i saw it kind of just very slowly move into my field of view and I'm looking at this and I'm going, that's, that's not a bobcat. That's too big to be a bobcat. But that is, those are not the ears of a wolf. Those are not the ears of a cougar. And it's, it's too low to the ground to be a bear. And those aren't bear's ears anyways. And again, as I'm looking at it, it's just kind of a shape. I can't 
it's I'm looking at it through some, you know, underbrush and foliage and um I'm just I'm looking at this thing and I'm going, first of all, that's black. Whatever this is, it is jet black. And those those ears just those ears are what kept bugging me. So again, it just it kind of it disappeared into a little I don't want to say pine grove, but there's like three or four um little like pine tree saplings that I kind of I kind of lost it lost it in. And about five minutes later, it kind of I don't want to say like emerged, but I caught sight of it again directly in front of me. And this time it had crossed the game trail that was 25 yards out from me. And it was probably 25 to 30 feet in front of me. So at this point, it hits me like, that's a wolf. There, there are black wolves around. Michigan is primarily has gray wolves. There have been some black wolves seen in Michigan. Um, black wolves tend to be larger and um, they hunt alone. They don't, like, they typically don't run with a pack. They're solo hunters. So my first impression was I could see the shoulders and I could see the face, but it, it was, it was a wolf and it's muzzle looked a little, it, the muzzle looked a little longer and the ears again, Wes, I'm going to keep coming back to the ears because the ears were driving me nuts this whole time. I wasn't thinking cryptid, wasn't thinking werewolf, wasn't, th- wasn't thinking any of that. I've spent years in the woods and I have, I have never come across anything that would lead me to believe there was something in Northern Michigan. Now, not saying I don't believe everybody who's seen it because there are too many reports for me to just shrug it off. Personally, I just had never seen, heard, felt anything that would even lead me to think, Oh, that was a cryptid or that was a Sasquatch or whatever. So I'm looking at this thing and it, I realized this is displaying every characteristic of a stalk. This thing knows I'm here. It's staying out of sight. I didn't, I haven't heard a thing, not a twig, not a rustle of a leaf, like nothing that it has been dead silent. And when I say dead silent, like that there's birds chirping overhead. Like it's not like that eerie, like everything leaves the forest. Like that's, that's again why I wasn't thinking cryptid. I always thought if I have a cryptid experience, the sun's going to go bl- like I thought it was going to be a big spectacle. This to me was, you know, I'm getting stalked by a wolf. Yeah. You know, this thing's this thing's creeping up on me. So again, it's 25, maybe 30 feet away, about two feet off the ground, hunched real low. So at that point, I just okay. So I drew my pistol. I carry a 45. Um, in Michigan, you don't really need anything bigger than that. I'm not going to carry a hand cannon or, you know, a 44 or a 500 mag. Um, if I'm going to shoot something, I want something that I can shoot. And if I need follow-up shots, I can accurately take follow-up shots. So I simply unholstered it and kind of put it in my lap. I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. You know, I'm getting up close. I'm seeing, you know, stuff that I haven't seen since college. As long as this thing just kind of backs away and keeps its distance, we're fine. And you know what? I can leave the woods and tell my supervisors about it back at the office. Um, so at this point it starts like getting a little lower and still creeping forward. Now I still like, I couldn't make out arms or legs or shoulders, but I could see the head and I could, I guess I could see the shoulders. Um, but I still couldn't make out exactly what this was. So at this point, I'm like, okay, I, I don't like this. This doesn't seem to be backing down. That's when I kind of got this weird feeling in my gut. Like I'm up here in the middle of nowhere. Nobody really knows where I'm hunting. My nearest neighbor is probably 30 miles away. Work knows I'm hunting, but I'm off for three weeks to hunt because that's what I do every year. You know, if, if something happens, I'm going to be out here for forever and no one's going to find me. My parents won't know what's going on. My siblings. So at that point I decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to put this thing down. I'm going to drag it out of here. I'm going to call up my local uh, conservation officer, call up somebody. Let, hey, this is what happened. This is where it happened. 
if it's my life or his life, I'm sorry, but it's going to be their life every single time. Yeah. So bring the gun up, get it in my sights, squeeze off around. When it, when I squeezed off the round, I'm, I hit it because it jerked its head to the left, gave its head a little shake, and then slowly looked right back up, like right in my direction. So if you've ever seen a dog like run into a sliding glass door, just kind of steps back a little dazed and shakes his head and just kind of walks off. That's what this reminded me of. Like that phased it, but didn't do anything to like stop it from coming. And at that point, I was maybe I winged it. Did I miss it? Did it like, like, there's no way I just hit something in the head with a 45 and it just shrugged it off. At that point, I decided to try what is typically referred to as a intimidation display. So wolves do it. Bears do it when they stand up on their hind legs and growl. Wolves will get real low and show their teeth. Um, those are intimidations, intimidation displays. They're not necessarily, I mean, they're aggressive, but that doesn't mean the animal is about to charge you. All that really shows is keep coming forward and things are going to get ugly. Most of the time, if you start backing away, they're going to back away and they're going to leave. So I was like, okay, well, this is clearly a predator. It's an apex predator. It's, it's probably never had anything stand up to it and be aggressive towards it. Usually they turn and run. So at that point, I jumped off, jumped up off of my seat and just like yelled at it, never taking it out of the sight of my pistol. I've got this thing dialed in and I, I just jumped up and just kind of yelled, screamed. The second I got done yelling, it stood up. And it didn't stand up in like the traditional sense of the word. Like it didn't push off the ground with its front legs and kind of, you know, lift itself up. It, it was like that classic scene in the movie Nosferatu where all of a sudden the vampire just kind of like stands up out of the coffin. Like this thing was just all of a sudden, just like, just like up. And I only looked at it for about 10 seconds before I shot again. But in, in those 10 seconds, I noticed it had ex an extremely broad shoulders, a really broad chest and its arms were really skinny. They looked really weak and they were really long. Like they, they hung down almost to like his knees. And I say a, he, it could have been a female. I didn't see genitalia. Typically you won't on, <laughs> on these type of canids. Um, but it just, it stood up. And I, I kind of, this isn't happening. Okay. Like we're done. Squeezed off two more. Hit it in its chest. And I know I hit it in its chest. Cause you could see where the, the rounds hit and it kind of like ruffled the fur and it, like took a small step back to kind of brace itself. So at that point, it, it looked back up at me and slowly, slowly sank back down to the ground, back to all fours, and just just slowly backed away into the brush, and, and that was it. It, it was not like your typical... I've heard plenty of your dogman stories and, and a lot of people compare them to Anubis. This was, this was not anything like that. The only thing about this that had like a human characteristic was that it had broad shoulders, a broad chest, and then it like tapered down to his waist. Like you see on like really fit, not necessarily like bodybuilders, but guys who are in really good shape Broad shoulders, broad chest, tapers a bit to the waist. That was the only thing about this that I could say looked even remotely human. Everything else, everything else was completely. I mean, if I tell you close your eyes, picture a werewolf. I mean, that's and it sounds dumb to say, but Wes, that's what it was. That's what I saw. That's what I shot. 
Yeah, I'm fascinated by your encounter, Matt. And, you know, being a wildlife biologist, I mean, you're out there all the time. You know the predators, you know the non-predators, and then you run into this thing. I mean, you're an educated, this is what you went to school for, and now you're running into this thing you've never seen before. Um, I want to ask you, I mean, what did you think it was? A 45 bullet going down range, that's 230 grain. That's a lot of lead going down range. You'd think you'd put it down, uh, hitting it. But what was kind of going through your mind at that moment? Um, honestly, Wes, I don't, I don't know. Um, again, the, the first, the first shot, you know, I was, uh, I might've missed it. I might've, you know, winged it. I might've, you know, maybe it was underpowered round. And I mean, you take a 45 ACP, go out to Africa and shoot a water Buffalo with it. It's going to laugh at you. You know, a 45 is a big projectile, but in, in terms of velocity, it's moving very slow compared to other rounds. Yeah, but, I'm sure if one hit my head, it would blow out the side of my oh, head. Oh, know? yeah, ab- absolutely. Um, and, and that was one of the big things that, like, when I did eventually leave the woods, I just, I, what, what was that? Like, I, I kind of didn't believe myself. For like a day and a half, uh, you you fell asleep. You were lucid dreaming. You know, as hunters, I think we can all say, "Hey, we've all fallen asleep in the stand or in the blind or on the ground." But no, I had three rounds missing from my magazine when I got back. It, yeah, I I can't explain. I can't explain that away. I can't. I don't have an explanation for it. There's there's nothing that I can say that would even remotely come close to explaining how something you know i'm not gonna say small because it was it probably stood about seven seven and a half feet like it was big but you shoot a deer with a 45 acp it's gonna go down you know you shoot a bear in the head probably gonna go down those are those are decently big animals um so yeah so i that explanation i just i i don't know 